Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 25 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, uh, where today we're going to play a little bit more with hex casting. Dude, this mod is wild. It is pretty cool. There is some neat stuff in it. I haven't really gotten too deep into the mod yet. Last episode we did a little basic discovery, kind of figuring out the basics. And we've got it to the point now where we realize how we can cast spells, for the most part. Uh, I'm not great at them yet. But, like, you know, now there's definitely shortcuts we can take, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. But this spell represents me, the player. Uh, this symbol represents uh, modifying the players to make it the player's location. Uh, then I can take the player's look vector and combine those two. And it doesn't matter where you draw these symbols, by the way. It does matter how you draw them, though. So that's what the block I'm looking at. And then I can do something like this, this, and this to break the block I'm looking at. How cool is that? I love it. It's neat. Now, drawing all those symbols to break a single block, some of you may be saying, Dyer, you have a pickaxe. Well, I mean, clearly this is just a little demonstration. There's a lot more cool stuff we can do. But you can also save these symbols um, to things called trinkets. Now, the trinkets are pretty cool. There's actually three tiers of trinket. Um, and that is found in the casting items book. And basically what you do is you save a sequence of symbols into the trinket, and then you can just cast those symbols repeatedly by right-clicking the trinket. Um, there's three tiers. There's ciphers, which are really like the most basic form. Um, and once their internal reserves of energy are destroyed, they, they get broken. So that's not the best. Trinkets, which is the middle tier, um, you can cast a bunch, and then eventually they run out of charge, and you have to recharge them using a spell. And then artifacts, um, after they're depleted, can use the amethyst from the player's inventory, um, just like a staff does. So artifacts are pretty cool. But if I remember correctly, artifacts, they require a music disc. My goodness. Um, so, you know, artifacts are not cheap. Let's put it that way. So we definitely want to try out trinkets today. So I'm going to make one of them and see how it goes. Does that sound like a plan? I think so. And I think it'll also be super cool once we get into spell books and whatnot. But we'll we'll figure that all out as time goes by. So trinkets. Uh, so I need to hold it in my offhand. And I think what I need to do is... Let's see. Um, they all require me to hold the empty item in my offhand require two things. The list of patterns to be cast and an entity representing a dropped stack of amethyst to form the items. So we need a list of patterns and then we also need an entity. Okay, I think I know how to do this. And then we have to draw this crazy symbol, which does not look easy, but we'll figure it out. So let's start with a simple one, which is just going to be... Um, the break block and then we'll probably come up with some more complex things to do in a bit just like with Psy, there's some really complex stuff you can make that does some really powerful things so we'll be checking out some of those shortly all right so this is going to get complicated but i think i'm ready um so we saw with um making the casting items that we want to basically hold the trinket in our offhand and choose an entity which is going to represent the battery of this item so the more um fuel you give it the more times you can cast before you have to recharge it i'm going to give it a stack of amethyst dust i went down into my geode and mined a little bit more and then actually went and looked for another geode and mined a little bit more there so i'm going to do some amethyst dust uh some amethyst shards i've got some extra stuff i'm going to put a whole stack of amethyst dust on the ground and that'll make a decent sized battery, right? Like, you know, we could throw a whole stack of amethyst shards or a whole stack of charged amethyst and that would be an even bigger battery, but I don't want to go too crazy, especially for this, like, relatively speaking, basic spell. I'm just kind of playing and learning the mod, so we'll have some fun with it, right? So we have to target that entity and then create a list of patterns and then cast our craft trinket. You ready? So here goes nothing. So first off, we start by casting... Um, the spell that will target the entity. Now, a good trick is to do F3B to enable the entity uh, bounding boxes so you know what to look at. Cool? So I'm gonna start with a nice and simple me position followed by my look vector. Um, and then this spell here 
is like the other one, but instead of targeting the block I'm looking at, it's gonna target the entity I'm looking at. Or not. Hold on, I'll try that again. I was close. My position, my look vector, that doesn't feel right to me. I think it's this. Yeah, that's right. The entity I'm looking at. See how it says amethyst dust up there? All right, so that's step one. Now we need to draw the spell that we want to write into this guy, All right? So we do that, um, you know, open brackets thing. I'm trying to that, okay? And then it's like my position, my look vector. I always stink at this. Um, for some reason, I just can't remember this pattern. It's an hourglass after one, the, the, the second dot is the bottom of the hourglass and we wanna go up and to the right. Okay. Like that. So that's gonna target the block I'm looking at. And then we wanna break the block I'm looking at, right? So that would be over and then up. Okay. And then I'm gonna close off that spell All right, so now we've got the amethyst dust is this bit. This whole line of spells is, this represents a grouping of spells, right? Start the spell, target myself, my world position, myself where I'm looking, combine those to get the block I'm looking at, break the block that I'm looking at, and then close the spell. Cool? All right, so now we need to add that to the thing in my left hand. So what we do is we go to uh, items, casting items, and get the spell. And this is what I need to draw now. So, boy, that's confusing. Uh, that is a lot of steps. So I go, I'm gonna have to like do this. Let's see, one, so I go to here and then I go around the inner And then what? I go out and around the outer. Okay. I think I got it. I think I got it. We'll see. So I start here. I'm gonna go one, two, three. And then from here, I go up, over, down like this, and then I go here, and that should be it. I think I did it. All right, F3B to get rid of this. Now, if I'm correct, what I did is I just programmed the spell that is break the block I'm looking at into this trinket. Ah, ha, ha. I did it. First try. Look at that. That is cool. And this guy has a numerical mana amount. So it's got 96% of its charge remains. So I can do that like, you know, a decent number of times. That is cool. That is pretty neat. All right. I... I feel like I like that. That is super cool. Now, obviously, that's a very basic, 
bit of magicry. Um, you know, breaking a block is nothing super exciting. But I find it's best when you're learning a mod or learning to do something or how things work. Start with something simple like, hey, I just want to break the block I'm looking at. And that helps you learn how the mod works. All right, so I think I've got the basics of this mod down. Like, I get how it works. It's complicated, though. It's definitely complicated. But it's really pretty neat. It's one of those things I'm going to have to play with, I think, a bit off camera at this point and kind of really get a good feel for. And what I think I'll do is I'll come up with some really cool spells or, like, Google them and then show you their effects. Because I think at this point you guys get the gist of how to, like, do the basics. So I don't want to do too much more on camera of doing, like, the, 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 the creating of things. But I definitely want to play with this mod some more. So for now, I'm probably just going to take a little break from it. Um, what I do need to do, though, is we need to find more spells in, uh, in, in chests. So I might hang on to you and maybe, you know, I'm going to hang on to a lot of this stuff, but in here, I'm going to keep you in there, some charged and some regular amethyst, maybe just, just to have as like a casting medium type deal. And maybe I'll put you guys down here. Yeah, that seems like a good place. I'm going to put you down here. I like that. And then um, the hex book as well. And then the rest of this stuff. Um, yeah, that should be fine. That should all be good. All right, cool. Yeah, so that's what I want to do. I want to take a little break from this because we need to do some exploration in the world and find dungeon chests. And in those, we should find um, some information that leads us to the to progress in the mod where we'll be able to get uh, our great spells. So we already checked out some of the basic spells that we can do that are easy. Most of the basic spells, they tell you how to draw them. The great spells, we know they exist, but we don't know how to draw them. So you have to start at the right point and trace it in the right direction. So like for this spell, it could either be like come in here, go around here, go up here, go up there and do that. Or it could be come here and go here and then do, 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 do. Or it could be come in here and go up first and then around and then down. Or it could be come in and go, and go like this. Like there's basically a hundred different ways to draw this symbol, right? We don't know which one is the correct one. You can either sit there and keep guessing until you get it, which I'll be honest, I did off camera for the last maybe 15 minutes. I eventually guessed the flight spell and then immediately forgot how I drew it <laughs> because I drew it like 20 times and then like one time it happened to work because I happened to guess the exact right pattern and I'm like, now how did I do that? And then I haven't been able to repeat it again. So I think your best bet, you can try just like if you're going to guess, make sure you're writing down or noting each attempt so that when you find the correct attempt, you'll know what it was. <laughs> that would be my recommendation to you. Um, now that said, I'd like to very much try some of these abilities and, and, and check out some more of these things, but I want to get some of the greater spells and whatnot. Um, so let's try some other stuff for a while. And as we're exploring the world and doing more things, then we'll come back to this mod and try some of the more advanced stuff, kind of like we would do with a lot of other mods. And there's definitely talk of rituals, which I think would be really neat to check out. But again, that's a lot. I think this is probably the rituals chapter. And that's where we can get some really cool stuff. So after a little bit of mining, uh, I think one of the next things I really need to get organized is, is this my, yes, bing, huzzah, lots of redstone, nice, and some diamond, some other good things. Very excited, very, very excited. Um, one of the things I think we should probably focus on next is item storage. And I feel like, we should make a decision at this point between applied energistics, which we've seen, we've played, we've done plenty of times before, but I'm told has had some updates and changes to it. So I'm kind of curious to see what those are. I don't know how much has changed or been updated. So part of me wants to explore that or refined storage, which I don't know if it's been changed at all. I'm not, I don't think it has been much. I mean, obviously, you know, ported and, and I don't know if there's been many changes to it, but I think Applied Energistics has had some. I need to do a little bit of research to see like what's new. All right, so after some decisions and thinking, I think I'm gonna go with Applied Energistics 2. Uh, mostly because I'm just curious as to what's different. I wanna see how it feels and how it plays and what's different about it. Also, you know I like channels. I know not everybody loves channels, but I like them, so we're gonna go with that. So for those of you who don't know, Applied Energistics is a really cool uh, mod that allows you to store resources um, in an energy system rather than in chests. So super fun, good to play with. 
Uh, one of the things we're going to first make here is a charger, which I like that it no longer... I don't think you have to find charged Surtis Quartz in the world anymore, which is kind of a nice uh, change of pace. Like, I think that's pretty cool. Um, you can just craft it straight up, which I think is definitely the way to go. Now, unfortunately, um, I think we are still going to need to find ourselves some meteorites, which I personally never thought was the best way to do things, because sometimes it's a little bit buggy, but we'll see what happens. Um, so first things first, make yourself a charged Surtis Quartz Crystal, like I just did. Shocking. And then we can find a meteorite compass. So for that, we're going to need a few iron and this dude. And that looks cool. So now we're ready to go hunt for meteorites. So all we got to do is hold this thing in our hand. And I'm actually going to throw it in my offhand. Let's see. Does that work? It does. And let's go leaping. Not too shabby. And we're going to have to basically head to where this compass points. Uh, now, I know I've explored a little bit, so I'm curious if, like, the meteorite we're looking for is on the map anywhere. That would be nice if we could find it. It's probably under the ground or something and not as easy to see. Like, that looks like it might be something. Maybe I'm crazy. I definitely need to amp up my mana and, and Ars Magica. Like, because I'm enjoying the leap spell here, and I would like to do more with it, if possible. Um, but if we want to do more, we have to get in deeper into Ars Magica. Ah, there we go. There's a meteor. Nice, we found one. Hooray! So all we do uh, is, is mine into this thing. Oh my, you take a while to break. Is that how, is that how long it would take to break with a pickaxe? This is like obsidian speed right here, isn't it? That's actually fascinating. Oh, Fluix blocks. That's different. And then inside you find a Sky Stone chest, uh, which will typically contain a little bit of Surtis and some presses. So there's four presses that we need to find, and you can find, you know, some of them in each Sky Stone chest. So we got unlucky, we got two of the same press. That's what I would call bad luck. But, I mean, if you're going to give me Fluix blocks now... So that's different. I don't think Fluix blocks were ever found inside this guy. Now, if I remove the chest, does it still... Yeah, it still spins the compass, dude. So what we're going to want to do... I usually just leave the chest behind because it's just it's just a chest. And I think you can make them, can't you? Skystone chests? Yeah, you can totally craft them if you want. So no sense in, in hanging on to that bad boy. So now what we want to do... Ow, ow, is move far enough away from this location to make the compass point somewhere else. So basically get as far away from the meteor. Oh, boy. ow, that hurt. <laughs> I got a corpse run to do. So yes, as I was saying, get away from the meteor, as far from the meteor as you can. What are these guys? Are those quartz uh, or cork thingies? I think they are. Yeah from Quark. Neat. I like that. And then once you're far enough away, your compass will point towards another one. And then you got to find another one. So I'm going to do a little of this off camera, and we'll be back once I've found something, hopefully. My goodness. They don't seem all that common, do they? Hey, here we go. Found another one. Neato. Actually, did you just get placed? How did I do that? Oh. All right, so this is a logic press. All right, two down, two to go. Let's go back to finding more. You know what it's about time I make, by the way, is a charged porter and receiver, because this will make my life a little bit easier, especially as I'm exploring the world. Um, I usually like to make one of these as fast as I can, and this is from a mod called RF Tools. There's a bunch of neat things in RF Tools. We're going to be checking out a lot of it, don't worry. Uh, but one of the early things I like to make is a matter receiver and then a charged porter, uh, which is pretty good. Now, can I get the advanced charged porter here? Just needs a little bit of redstone and diamond. That doesn't seem so bad. Might as well upgrade it to the top tier. This guy's even better. Nice. All right, cool. And then let's sort all my stuffs. Uh, now, this will require some power. So if I'm going to... I usually stick this kind of like in the middle of my base. 
And then we're gonna need to power it some way. Uh, so I'll probably get some redstone, and I'm assuming I need more of you. So let's just redstone and iron. So let's get four of these, and that many of those, and that can go away. So the matter receiver is part two of a two-part system uh, available in uh, RF tools that lets you teleport, right? So uh, you can teleport from, um, from a matter um, transmitter to a matter receiver. And then the item that I just crafted, the charged porter, is, uh, is pretty neat. It's a, I'll just run this over to here for now. It's basically a handheld version of the teleporter. So this guy should be getting power now, if I'm not mistaken. Oh boy, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. Okay, cool. Why were you not letting me access your UI until I picked you up? Uh, use this name. So I'm just gonna call you Home Base. It's publicly available. And if I shift right click my charged porter on it, he now adds that as one of his destination possibilities. And if I shift right click in general, we can see all the possible destinations. I'll leave it with just one for now. And then in my energetic infuser, I can charge this guy up with some power. Dun, dun, dun. And now that he's fully charged, anywhere I am, anywhere in the world, I right click this and I teleport home. That's from the nether, from the end, any dimension, any place in the world, I now have a way to zoop right back home, regardless of where I am or what I'm doing. That, my friends, is convenient. So it looks like there's another meteorite compass in this direction that I'm getting pointed towards. I really, I really need to amp up my mana in Ars Magica. That's something we're gonna have to do soon. Cause I'm having fun with Ars Magica and I wanna get deeper and like more powerful spells and whatnot, but we really need to like level up a bit before we can do more. Well, I found a slime island, so that's kinda cool. Don't mind if I do. Don't mind at all if I do actually. Yeah, I'll snag just a little bit of this. Never hurts to have some slimy saplings. So sometimes, by the way, your compass leads you to a place that's, you know, possibly underground. I feel like my compass keeps popping out of my hand. Oh, you know why? Because when I right click with it in my hand, it puts it down or something. Oh, oh, that explains why I keep losing the thing. So it's possible that there's a meteor underground here, though sometimes it like looks like there is and then it's not super easy to find. So, you know, your mileage may vary on whether or not you'll actually find one in this spot. It's supposed to, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Let's let's just let's just go with that. We'll see what happens. In theory, there's a meteor around here somewhere. Where that might be, we'll find out. Well, that's weird, right? Isn't that weird? Why is there grass down here? Moss blocks, huh? Oh my goodness! Hello. I think we just found a nice little underground cave. That's cool. Crimsonite from Create. What are you? You will make crushed iron at a 40% chance. That's not bad. That's cool. Look at this needle place, huh? Clay, huh? A lot of amount of clay. This is a cool cave, isn't it? Very cool. Very cool, I dare say. Very, very cool cave. All right, just wanted to... Oh man, look at my inventory is already a mess. Let's trash some of this stuff. Crimsonite I'll hang on to, because that sounds cool. 
All right, back in a few once I find, if I find the meteorite that I'm looking for. Dude, this, this cave system is pretty bananas. Pretty bananas. Still no luck with the meteor, though. So I've given up looking down there. I'm looking elsewhere now. I think we found one. It's underwater again, but we found it. Hopefully. Yes, perfect. Huzzah! Generally, I think I remember that these tend to form in chunk corners. So if you find one that's underwater, like do F3G and find the corner of the chunk, and I think you'll generally find it in there. Might not always be true, but hey, I'm trying. There we go. <clears throat> find and engineering. All right, well, that's three out of four. Of the We need the fourth one, and then we're good. All right, everybody cross your fingers. Because if I get the if I get the component I need, then I'll be very happy. All right, I think we lucked out. We got silicon press. Woohoo! So now we've got all four of the press types. Some of them duplicated, but some of them not. But the four presses is what you're looking for. So now that we've got that, we can start playing with applied energistics. All right, stop placing that on the wall. That's not at all. I never want you on the wall ever. I promise. All right, <clears throat> so I'm very happy about that. So that's good news. And we also got a bunch of Fluix blocks, which is kind of cool, because uh, I think we can just convert those into Fluix crystals. Yeah, buddy, that's nice, that's nice. I like that Fluix crystals are part of the world gen now, uh, at least at, you know when you find those uh, meteors. Like, you're not gonna find it too commonly, but it's still pretty nice. All right, so now, next stage of Applied Energistics is we're going to want some presses. Uh, inscribers, for example, uh, is what we need. So we're gonna need some sticky pistons. Good thing I found myself some slime balls. Um, so let's get ready to make some of that. So we're gonna need you, and we're gonna need some of those slime balls that we found. Should be cool. I mean, we don't need I want to say we need 10 of these to get started. And uh, some redstone and iron, some copper. And let's make these bad boys, right? So we're going to want close. Two more. So that we get 10 of those and we can get five of these. So five inscribers is generally the start point for what you want. And that'll be pretty helpful. And uh, our goal for what we want to make are the following blocks. We want to make an ME controller. We want to make an ME drive. We probably want to make a handful of 4K storage disks, and that would be you. Um, I generally like to get about 10 of these if I can. Uh, we're going to want a, uh, let's see, we're going to want some terminals. At the very start, we want the crafting terminal. Then we're going to want some other ones, you know, going forward from there. But I think that's like the basics of an applied energistic system, right? We don't really need too much more than that. Eventually, we're going to want better cables, uh, and we're going to probably want smart Fluix cables and dense Fluix cables, but we'll get to those later. For now, the basic ME Fluix cable will work. Um, so that should be cool. Not bad, not bad. Now, with Certus, talk to me about how this whole growth process works. So... Um, we can drop a Certus seed in water, and after 20 minutes, it'll grow into a Certus quartz crystal. Alternatively, we can shrink that down with crystal growth accelerators. Um, now, how do we get the Certus seeds? It's dust and sand, and dust comes from what? Uh, so we can just crush Certus quartz into dust, I guess? So I don't see the whole purpose of the growth system right now. Um, am I wrong? Am I wrong? Or is there like, because you get Certus Quartz from the world, right? So what's the point of the crystal growth accelerators nowadays? Inscribers can turn Certus Quartz into Certus Quartz dust. And so can crushers. 
Pure Certus Quartz Ore. That's yeah, from Elemental thingy. That we have to check out that mod at some point. Certus Quartz Ore. Yeah, we might need to. We need. Oh, you get two seeds per dust. Okay, so you can basically create an infinite Certus Quartz system. Figured it out. Um, so Certus Quartz turns into Certus Quartz dust. You can use the dust to get two seeds, and then each seed turns into a Certus Quartz. So basically, you can just infinitely dupe this as much as you want. So once you have a little bit of Certus Quartz, you should have an unlimited amount, in theory. Uh, you can also craft Fluix, right? Um, so Fluix seeds, Fluix dust. Okay, so redstone dust, charged Certus Quartz, and Nether Quartz thrown in water turned into dust, and then you can turn that dust into a seed, I assume. Yes, Fluix seeds, and that's the same process, right? And then you can also, I presume, so once you have a little bit, you can infinitely dupe seeds as well with the same process. So we are gonna want some crystal growth accelerators to speed that process up. But long story short, we should have an unlimited amount of Certus Quartz and um, Fluix crystals, which is good. All right, so we've got the preparations for an applied energistic system. Let's come back next episode and really build the whole thing out. So what I'm going to do is between episodes, I'll probably do a little bit of, well, I don't want to do too much crafting because I want to automate the inscribers using laser IO and show you guys how that all works. So we should probably be able to pull that off. So let's come back next episode. We'll look at making all the stuff that we need, including getting the crystal growth accelerator set up so that we can fully automate having an unlimited amount of Fluix and Certus Quartz crystals. Maybe we'll even use laser IO for that. We'll find out. For now, though, it's wrapping up point. So Darwin 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We will come back next time and uh, play a little bit with automating and preparing for Applied Energistics. Then we will migrate all of our storage stuff into Applied Energistics and kind of go from there. All right, Darwin 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.